Hello, everyone, and welcome to SIVA Talks. My name is Maria Villablanca. I am the host of the Transform Talks podcast and the co-founder and CEO of the Future Insights Network, a network of over 130,000 senior supply chain and logistics leaders worldwide. Uh, well, SIVA Talks is a series of live discussions with leading experts from around the world and practitioners from the logistics sector and beyond, where they're going to be sharing their insights and best practices about different topics uh, around the supply chain and logistics industry. SIVA Talks is featured in SIVA Insights, which is SIVA Logistics' thought leadership e-magazine. So I want to introduce you to our topic and our speaker. Today's session is going to be called, is called Women in Logistics, Gaining Trust and Credibility. And joining me in this session is Alexandra Olvera, who is the global commercial leader of SIVA Logistics. And we're going to be addressing the following key issues in today's session. The biggest misconceptions about women in logistics, some of the persistent biases and challenges that women in logistics face and how we can overcome them, some of the practices that can help expand your skills, and the impact of COVID and recent crises on the inclusion of women in the logistics sector. So again, I wanna welcome you all. And I wanna also say that you can please don't hesitate to react. So like when you like something and ask questions in the chat section, and we will be very much happy to answer them as this is a live session. So Alexandra, why don't I introduce you and maybe you give us a brief overview of what you do and how you got into this sector before we dive into the discussion. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Maria. Good morning, everyone from Long Beach, California, where I am uh, right now uh, on a business trip and happy to be here. Good afternoon in Europe. Good afternoon. So, so you know what, Alexander, how did you get into uh, this sector, actually? Well, uh, you know, like probably many others, it was really a coincidence in life, you know, through uh, CVs running around and, and friends uh, already in there. Uh, but uh, over the years, of course, I got the hang of it and I really enjoy uh, um, the logistics and what it entitles. But yes, I mean, answering your questions really by, by coincidence, I was really into uh, me my mechanical engineering uh, topics and then just uh, got invited to to join a, a big uh, 3PL and uh, yeah, everything from there is history. Well, exactly. I did just like me falling into the supply chain logistics industry, but it's a great industry to be in. Um, I, I, let's talk about women in logistics and the challenges, perhaps maybe the stereotypes and cliches that are uh, in the industry. So Alexander, in your opinion, what do you think are the biggest misconceptions around women in logistics? Well, I think it has changed over time, to be honest, but uh, as, as many, many other industries, it has been male dominated for, uh, for quite a long time. Uh, I mean, being 20 years already in this industry, I have certainly seen things change, especially on, on our customer size, me being, of course, on a 3PL side. But our customers side and um, their, their logistics departments have uh, been multiplying the, the amount of, of women. So uh, I think it, it used to be a, a much harder, um, probably for, for you know, families, uh, much ha harder ambiance to work in. But uh, little by little, flexibility and, uh, and, and uh, long hours and uh, I don't know, operational uh, jobs have been uh, uh, more accessible to women over the years. But I believe that uh, that it's also a choice from from women themselves to uh, to really jump into this, uh, you know, wonderful world of logistics. Do you think that maybe um, logistics as a function was seen as a back office sort of male uh, role that women couldn't be part of? Uh, do, you, do you think that that's something that's changed a lot uh, or do you think it's something that is, is changing in the future? No, I think it already has changed and specifically with, with, with COVID and I'm sure we'll talk about COVID later on too, but, but COVID changed the way people in general and the public in general saw logistics. Logistics, as you very well said, it was seen more as, as a, you know, something behind the curtains and, and very operational work and, and, um, and of course, it turns out it's a lot of it's a lot of planning. It's a lot of of things that don't necessarily entitle big physical work. Of course, there is, you know, but 
but uh, that also opened the door and opened the eyes of many, many uh, people and, and managers out there and, and, and young young women also to, to get inspired, you know, how, how everything, uh, globalization, of course, you know, made it also more visible. How does thing, you know, things get... Uh, how do things get to to my house every day and where where can i get them and where do they come from i think uh, mm-hmm. all those questions little by little were answered and and it turned it opened a full world of of uh, new possibilities out there for both men and women i agree um w- but let's talk about maybe the biases or the challenges that uh, women have to face in this industry today or you know recently what what would you say they would be um, I would say there's a lot of uh, of uh, pay equity gaps still. I mean, not only in logistics, uh, we we see it everywhere, uh, but um, but in 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 uh, logistics, we can definitely see that the people's perception again of of this logistics world being male dominated. Um, I would also say that. Uh, that the the role that women play, you know, in 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 uh, family and uh, in some cultures, uh, you know, being at home or, or being the, the child bearers, which of course is by nature, but, but in the end, you know, being also the home carers, it's, it's, uh, it's a bit of, of uh, cultural and, and um, yeah, sector uh, bias, I would say. And you know what else? I mean, um, I think, and I've, I've been reading some of the comments that are here that, that are coming in and people keep talking about pay equity. Um, and, and I want to talk about a little bit about reactionary um, uh, issue, reactionary sort of diversity uh, initiatives versus a more sustainable diversity initiatives. Do you think that companies need to embrace something a little bit more sustainable than just, I don't know, let's hire more women? How, how do we resolve this? Um, well, I personally am against uh, putting quotas and I'm not that type of, uh, you know, promoting uh, women because that would be going exactly to the opposite that uh, that I personally believe we need to go. So, um, I mean, initiatives like just, you know, making sure that in, in a panel of, of potential candidates, you can find, you know, one very capable woman and woman and then that you can systematically start thinking about how can I include one woman in at least one in in the hr processes or in a team and uh, but in my life i have also been part of only women uh, teams which is not good either you know it's mm. i think this is also a more uh, diversity and inclusion type of topic at some point than just women uh, um but um, but those type of initiatives making sure that you have a diverse group where to choose from uh, is much more um, something that I believe would help not only women but you know all the diverse groups and 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 uh, to 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 advance. And and in in so far as actually the kind of training and support that you can give women in the supply chain and logistics industry to sort of uh, like you say not not for the sake of hitting quotas but for the sake of actually driving talent. So, uh, you know, I want to move us along a little bit to the practices maybe that foster women's success in supply chain and logistics. So maybe if you could share some of the practices that could help women in the industry expand their skills, maybe even including their soft skills. Well, I I think um, women are often much more self-conscious about themselves. And and this is something that is hindering Mm -hmm. a lot of people, uh, a lot of women out there to really advance. You know, you you Mm -hmm. You want to say something, you have something interesting to say, just say it, because there's a lot of other people that will say it. Uh, and and uh, if you don't get yourself noticed, then it's also very difficult to move forward. Mm. So uh, I, I would say that, you know, if I had an advice is, you know, really, first of all, surround yourself with people that can give you advice and that can, uh, you know, push you. To, uh, to be a little bit more more aggressive and then embrace, you know, your difference and embrace your ideas and then be vocal about them. I, I like what you say there about being being vocal. How, how do you handle diversity in, in your team? Because you, you made a very valid point, which is diversity isn't, although this topic here is about women, but diversity is about trying to create 
diverse thinking in teams, which is such a vital, important part of running a business in today's complex world. How do you deal with it? Well, I've been lucky enough to, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I was born and raised in a multicultural family, and then I've been traveling with my family around a few countries in the past uh, 10, 11 years. So I've been lucky to, to, um, to work with different cultures and uh, being faced with different people. And everywhere you have something to learn. So how do I deal with it? Every time someone gets to my nerves, I, I really believe, number one, that it's me that needs to open my mind. So first, be, before, you know, closing the door, I, I just question myself, is this person really getting on my nerves because he or she is thinking differently? And maybe should I understand them better? Um, then that, that allows me to open a little bit my mind. And then, you know, the, the more... The more you surround yourself with people that actually know more than you in certain topics, the better a team is uh, is uh, to to have much better ideas and uh, really come up with with greater things. So, surrounding myself with different characters, trying to even palliate some of my. Uh, uh, the parts that I'm not comfortable with, you know, and, and making sure that my team can compensate that and I can coach them. So really making sure that everyone complements each other. I, I, uh, I often make uh, the analogies on, on puzzles and how people, you know, have uh, a different role to really make a bigger puzzle. And, and we are all different pieces in different shapes. And, um, but the fact that we work together, then we make a big, big, great picture. We, we do. What, what do you think the logistics industry has to offer women? And uh, I, I know I'm seeing from the chat here uh, that's on my screen, there are a lot of women in logistics and they're all saying hi and they're all saying and from different parts of the world. And uh, so what, what do you think is valuable about the logistics industry today and how the value it could add women? Well, I think logistics brings a, a very diverse uh, number of, uh, of of and type of roles. So you can either be, you know, you like physical work, you are in a warehouse in an operations, but you you like more, I don't know, a type of brainy work. There's a lot of analytics going on. There's there's really a, a wide range of of, of uh, jobs that you can do. And then, of course, also for the people that like management, uh, you know, little by little, you get into in, into teams. It's, a, a, as I said, we have much more visibility than we had before. And, and the quality that our customers and, you know, the end customer expects from, from a logistics uh, operation uh, gives a lot of expertise uh, or requires a lot of expertise. So there's, there's really a, a big, um, um, yeah, options out there for, for that. Then there's also the flexibility. Uh, for different types of roles, you get different types of flexibility. We all need at some point, and now after COVID, everyone realized that uh, logistics was also, uh, a, we were also able to, to, uh, to uh, deliver being at home. So there's also a lot of flexibility that we couldn't see before or that, uh, you know, we were biased and, and uh, now there is a lot of flexibility in, in the type of work that we can do. So you brought up COVID. So let's talk about this, this crisis that we live in, this world that we live in. So in your experience, what do you think the effect of COVID and maybe even other crises that we've been doing, that we've been experiencing, have had on the inclusion of women in the logistics sector? I think, of course, the first effect was that uh, you know, everyone was at home. Uh, and um, and when we talk about families and uh, the fact that you know men and women and children were all together, I believe that one of the positive effects of, of COVID was that the, the workload had to be rebalanced. And um, and women, some women, of course, the, the negative side of it is that some women had to come back to uh come back home uh, because they were doing jobs that could, that were not allowed to uh, to stay at home or keep their jobs from home. 
But for the ones that could, it had to be rebalanced between, you know, who takes care of the kids for, you know, you take care of them for one hour, I'll take care of them, you know, during lunchtime. And I think that flexibility has reflected after COVID into a, a also a much more flexible working hour for both men and women, helping women also to be more confident in saying, well, now, you know, I also have a household that is a bit better balanced and then... I can also put myself forward for this promotion or for this other uh, role that I wanted. Um, I, we're, we're almost, I mean, we've got a few minutes before uh, we run out of time. So I want to open up to a couple of people in, um, you know, here in the chat. And I've already seen a couple of questions. I don't have the answer, but someone asked a question about, uh, out of curiosity, what is the percentage of women in management? Uh, and I guess, uh, you know, I don't have those numbers to hand. I don't know if you have those numbers to hand, but I, I know the answer that I would have would be not enough. Uh, so what's your opinion on that, Alexandra? Yeah, definitely not enough. Uh, I mean, we, we saw uh, not long ago a, a Gardner um, survey, and um, it's definitely not enough, but it has been increasing in the past year. So uh in, in supply chain specifically, first line, first line managers and supervisors, so I believe were increasing from uh, 10 to almost 15% in, in, uh, in one year. So, uh, but then of course you go much uh, higher in the ladder and then also on C-suit, uh, then, then definitely there's a lot of, uh, of work to be done, uh, not only in, in supply chain and in logistics, but in general. So uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, VPs, senior directors, and all of that, I think it has been stable. Um, but from, from directors, senior managers, and managers, we have seen that increase, which to me, honestly, is uh, a positive um, news. Because in the end, if, if middle management is growing in terms of proportion of women, hopefully at some point we will also see the... the uh, when these women are ready, they will be moving into um, into bigger VPs, SVPs, and uh, bigger roles in the future. So I'm 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 hopeful that it will be the case. So last question. Let's look ahead. What do you think are some of the key issues that women in the logistics industry are going to be facing in the next five, in the next year to five years? Uh, and what advice would you give women in this industry? Well. I I mean, I think uh, women still have, you know, a long way to, to go. Uh, we are, yes, of course, uh, uh, there's, there's a lot of noise about women and how can we all uh, increase uh, diversity, inclusion and women in management, etc. So we, I think that the advice is we have to, uh, to jump on the wave, you know, uh, companies are looking for women out there. And if you're a woman that, uh, you know, really are ambitious, is ambitious and you have, you know, everything that you need, now's the time to just raise your hand and, and uh, put yourself up for that promotion because um, there is, of course, a need also from, from a company perspective, from companies to actually show that uh, they are they are uh, increasing their their women in the workforce so just take advantage of that and then in the end you know may the best uh, candidate win it doesn't have to be quotas but may the best candidate win i think unfortunately that is all the time that we have i want to thank alexandra and i want to thank all of you who are watching for being here on this siva talks uh, this is, as I said at the beginning, uh, a beginning of sessions that we've got. There are many more sessions to come, and we appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maria, and thank you, of course, for uh, Siva for these uh, talks, which I believe are really, really great for uh, for people and for everyone out there. Just keep up the good work, and uh, I'm sure that an opportunity will come for everyone uh, when when you look for it. It's always there. Thank you. Thank you very much.